Hey everybody, it's Tom with Path to Billions, helping you find a path towards financial freedom and a better life. If you want to join me on that path, please consider subscribing. In today's video, I'm going to show you 15 items that I've sold for a profit of $1,600. Now, if you've been watching Amazon FBA videos for a while, you'll know it's not too common for people to be showing the items they're buying and selling. And there's a pretty simple reason for that. It's pretty easy for people to watch these videos and go out and buy the same exact items that you're buying, and that kills any potential profit you could have made. So the reason I'm able to show you these 15 items is because they're already sold and they're not replenishable. So my hope with this video is not that you'll find exact items to go buy, but instead to give you an idea of the type of items I've sold in the past, so you have a better idea when you're outsourcing and looking for product, what to look for. I'm gonna show you the item, what I bought it for, what I sold it for, my profit margins, how many of them I sold, everything. So let's just jump right into the first one. So this first item we have is Snapchat Spectacles. It's essentially their version of smart glasses. And this is the first generation of them. So I actually found these at brookstone.com on clearance. They're no longer on clearance. But you can see I had three different colors. I had black, this red color, and then I also had this cyan color. And if we go over to Inventory Lab, you could see I bought these from anywhere from $0 to about $52. And you might be asking yourself, how did I get them for $0? Apparently they messed up an order and double sent it. So essentially I ordered however many items and then they sent the same items again. Uh, so I got those for free. So got a little bit extra profit on those. And you can see for the sales price, I sold them anywhere from about 62 up to 120 on this one. And then you also see this one here has a $4 loss, almost $5 loss. And the reason for that is because that was when I first had my repricer going and I accidentally sold this one at a loss because I was still trying to figure out what to do. There's gonna be a video in the future about repricers and how to use them properly. So stay tuned for that one. And you can see I average profit for these was about $40 each and there were 16 of them that I sold. So altogether, you're looking at about $640 in profit just from this one item. Next up, we have, we have a 75 pack of blank CDs and you can see it's currently unavailable. When I bought and sold it, I sold mine for over $40. And this one I actually found at a garage sale and I bought it for $5, I believe. So my net profit would have been $23. Keep an eye out at garage sales, even thrift stores for blank media. You can actually make some pretty decent money on it on Amazon. And then this next one we have is pretty interesting. It's a bunch of different characters from the same game, Skylanders. So you can see this one. This one I actually lost money on. It's $29 right now, but when I sold mine, mine only sold for $15. And then you have this one. This one I sold almost up to $65. I sold like three or four of them. Then you have this one and another one. And that's not even all the different characters I bought and sold. Those are just an example of some of the ones I bought. But you can see here, some of these have a buy cost of $0. And that's just because this these items were bought before I had inventory lab. So some of the older items don't have their buy cost updated correctly. But you can see, some of these I bought for 40 or $25 and those ones I actually bought on eBay after I sold the first batch. And that's my biggest tip off to this one is once you find an item that's profitable, don't be afraid to look for it in other sources. So for this one, it was a game character. So I went on eBay and just typed in whatever character it was and found a couple of them that I had enough margins on. Most of these I bought for about five to $7 at target clearance and the first batch I bought was about $7, I believe. And there was a bunch of different characters. Some of the characters weren't worth anything profit-wise. But then after a couple days, I went to a different target and they were marked even lower than the first target I went to. And so I picked up some more at like 4 or $5 a piece. But you can see there's a bunch of different characters. They sold for anywhere from like $16 up to $65. And my average profit per sale on these is $14.22 with $22 individuals sold all together. So that's about $200 profit for all of these, which isn't too bad. Our next item is, it's a portable pour over coffee mug. 
So you put your coffee or tea in this little metal thing, you pour your hot water over it, and you take a fresh brewed cup of coffee or tea with you on the go. I bought and sold the black and the white one, and I actually bought these from TJ Maxx or Marshalls, one of those stores. You can see I bought them for about $13 each. Sold them for anywhere down here at $30 a piece, all the way up to almost $40 a piece for these two, or these three actually. And my average profit per, per sale was $12.40. Sold 11 of these units, and you're looking at about $135 profit off of this item. As you can tell with some of these items, there's multiple versions of them. And you also gotta recognize that multiple versions means there's gonna be different prices for everyone. So just because the black one of this sells for a certain amount doesn't mean the white one's going to sell for it. I believe the black one was actually selling for less money at one point, And then they seem to level out in prices. So my next item is a Lessie Electric Citrus Juicer. And you can see this one's also currently not available. But this one, I was buying for about $110. So it was $100 and then taxes. Um, sold each one for $200. Net profit about $50 return on investment at 48%. And this one's pretty interesting because I bought the first one and had it in stock for probably a month or more and it didn't sell. And I ran into a second one at TJ Maxx and I didn't want to buy it because I had the first one still sitting in stock and I didn't want to have two be stuck with two. But the day I saw the second one, the first one sold. So I was like, well, now I gotta go back to that TJ Maxx. And I happen to be going that way anyway. So I picked up a second one, sold it, and this one sold within two weeks, which is pretty nice. Next up, we have a Medela breast pump. So this one was a Walmart clearance item. Normally with Walmart clearance, you don't tend to find a lot of good stuff. With this one, I got pretty lucky. You can see it's listed for about 152 now. I sold mine for 150. Bought it, it was $50 on clearance and plus tax, so $53.31. Net profit is almost $70, a nice return on investment of 130%. So that's another $70 in profit right there. And there was actually two of these at on the clearance section, but one was just like the box was all ripped apart, so I didn't buy that. Our next item is this controller. This one's pretty crazy because it's listed at $70 now, but you can see here, I sold mine for about 35 at the time. And this one was another one that I bought at TJ Maxx or Marshalls. And this one was kind of weird because I never see video game stuff at the TJ Maxx and Marshalls near me. And this one I actually got this controller and a couple video games. But you can see I made about 965, profit of 65% or return on investment of 65%. So next up we have this Our Garden. It's basically an indoor garden for herbs and stuff that you put in your kitchen. I sold mine for about the same price they're listed for now, $95. Cause see, I bought it for about 50, so my net profit was 21, ROI at 44%. And this was another Target clearance. The thing to keep in mind with Target clearance if you're shopping there, is Target doesn't usually have one section of clearance. Sometimes they might have a clearing section in the back corner but a lot of times their clearance is just on the end caps. So you kind of have to walk the whole store to look for clearance items. And this was what this item was. It was just on the end cap, picked it up, scanned it, had enough profit, so I bought it. So if you're enjoying this video so far, hit that like button. And let me know down in the comments if you want to see more of these videos in the future. I actually really enjoyed making these type of videos. I think they're super helpful for new sellers. So let's keep going. Next up, we have three different flavors of these heavenly hunks. And you can see these different ones. I think there's like four different flavors total. But you can see I bought them for about $4. Sold them for 10 to 14 actually. Made anywhere from two to $6. And the reason I wanted to show these ones was this is an item that you do not want to sell. You can still buy these in the store, but the company that manufactures these will send you a cease and desist letter on Amazon telling you you're not allowed to sell them, even though they're not gated, which I think is kind of weird. But they sent me a cease and desist letter and I figured I would just ignore it. And so I did, and then they sent me another one. And since I was a newer seller when I was first starting to sell these, I didn't want to mess with it. So I just ended up returning them to myself and I ended up selling them on eBay. I think at the 
when I was all said and done, I ended up basically breaking even or taking a, lot, a small loss. But you really don't know that stuff until you try and sell it, unfortunately. You cannot sell this product, this specific product. There's no real good tips to avoid these type of products, unfortunately. You just gotta sell them and if you get a letter like that, especially if you're a new seller, just listen to them, take them off. You don't wanna cause any issues with Amazon. All right, so next we have this book. So if you watched my last video, last week's video, you'll know I mentioned that I do not sell used books anymore. And this was actually one of the first books I bought and sold when I started getting into used books. And you can see this book is currently listed used for about $19. Believe it or not, when I sold it, I sold mine for $45. And I believe the buy cost was like two or three dollars. I bought it from like a local thrift store. So I net profit about $30 which is not too bad. And this was like one of the first books I bought and sold when I was getting used books. So I got super excited about it. That's why I jumped into it and really kept going after it, but in the end it didn't pan out. So I'll put a link to that video so you can check that out about why I don't sell used books anymore. Next up, we have this light fixture from Alan Roth. And you can see this one's another one that's not available anymore. So if you look over here, I sold these for $110. So this one's an interesting story. I bought these at Lowe's on clearance and you can see the buy cost is zero. That's because it was before I had inventory lab set up so I didn't import the buy cost. Now the other interesting thing is I bought them on clearance for about $30 each, but the lady at the cash register only rung up one. So I ended up getting basically for $15 each, right around there, I don't remember the exact number. So I pretty much ended up netting $60 each on these, so $120 profit, which is not too bad. And then even more interesting with these was one of these got returned from a customer and then it just disappeared. So I contacted Amazon, asked them what was going on because I was gonna return it to myself, check the product and see if I could send it back in Amazon to resell. But Amazon ended up being the one that lost it in their warehouse. So they actually reimbursed me as if I sold it. So. I ended up getting the full sales price on both of them, even though one of them disappeared. So Amazon does mess up every once in a while, and they're usually pretty good about reimbursing you for that type of stuff, so it's something you just have to deal with the, with the platform. Next up is actually another Lowe's clearance item. You can see this one is used for 217, which is interesting. But when I sold mine, I sold it for 217 brand new. And this is another one, Lowe's Clearance, right in the front of the store. Uh, buy cost of 60. I net profit 117, so almost 200% ROI. And the one thing I would like to say about Lowe's is I rarely shop at Lowe's or Home Depot for Amazon. And it's just because the amount of items you're going to find and the chances you have of finding good items at those stores are slim to none. This is when I was first starting and I would go into Lowe's because I was just trying to find anything, trying to figure out what I can and can't sell. And I got lucky. So you can go into Lowe's and Home Depot's like every once in a while, but I wouldn't recommend going into them every single time. For me personally, it's just not worth it. So our next item is this water bottle. And I actually sold mostly this blue and gray one. And then it was also, there's one of this pink and purple one. And this was another Target clearance, just like the Arrow Garden. And same thing, I was just on end cap and there was 16 of them. So there's 15 of the blue and gray, and then one pink one down here. And the pink one and the purple one sold for the least amount. And you can see they sold for about 1830. Sold the rest of them for all 2103. Average profit per sale, $5, 16 of them. So you're talking I made $80 off water bottles, which is pretty awesome. Next up is this muzzle for dogs. I had two different sizes. I had a size six and then whatever size this one is, five. And you can see that size five sold for almost $22. And then these sold, one sold for $10. And the reason is, is if you look, this one was back in March and then these ones were in May. At this point, I just wanted to sell them. So I put the price down. I think I matched the lowest offer and just sold them. And you can see I bought them for only a dollar plus tax. So I made plenty of money on them. You're talking 1400% return on investment almost. On this one, 400 almost. ROI on this one, so it was really worth it. And these ones were actually from Petco. Again, Petco's not really, or PetSmart even, is not a store I would recommend shopping at, 
you're very rarely going to find items there. They don't really have much of a clearance section. This one was just dumb luck. Me and my girlfriend happened to be going in there for looking for items for our own animals. And we were looking in the clearance section and I saw these and I figured I'd scan them and they happened to be worth money. So again, I wouldn't bother wasting your money in Petco and PetSmart. You can go in there once in a while, similar to Lowe's and Home Depot, but I wouldn't use that as your main place to source. So then our next item is this spice. And this one's pretty interesting. You can see here, it's now down to 17. But if you look over here, I sold mine for $25. And this is another one that has a pretty good lesson to it. So when I bought mine, I bought it for $5. And I believe the list price was like $30. But it had a really high sales rank in grocery. And so my thought process was, it's got a high price and a higher sales rank. So maybe it has a high sales rank because of the high price and people aren't willing to buy it at that price point. So my thought was, I'll send in uh, for $25. It'll be lower than the current offer, and maybe that'll encourage people to buy it because it's cheaper than the other option. And that actually did work. And you can see I got 230% return on investment. Made eleven fifty on it on a $5 item, which is crazy. I never ended up finding more of these. I don't even know why I scanned it in the first place, but that's a pretty good thing to look for, is look at items and if they have a high sales rank and like maybe one or two FBA offers and they're really high price compared to the buy cost you're paying for it, Consider just going in there and making a little bit less money, but you're more likely to sell it. So you can see I, for this item, I paid $5. And then with the juicer, I paid up to $100. And so you gotta be willing to pay up for some items, but really you should be looking at the numbers and looking at your return on investment, your profit margins. And as long as the money's there and the sales rank makes sense, then go ahead and buy it. And I really hope this video just gives you a starting point for what type of items I've bought and sold in the past. This video isn't meant to show you exact items you go out and buy right now. It's just to give you an idea of like some of the type of items that I've previously bought and sold for profit. And it also gives you some tips on looking at certain clearance items. Also making sure you go and look for other sources of the products that you already found are profitable so you can replenish them. And for me, when I got started, the way I found these items is I literally just went to store to store to store scanning random stuff and hoping you'd make a profit. Every item you pick up and scan should be a learning opportunity for you. Every item you pick up and scan should take you one step further to getting better and more efficient at this. That's exactly how I got started with this and now you can see these 15 items I sold for $1,600 profit and you can too. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.